NVIDIA's DLSS technology, which upscales real-time gameplay visuals from a lower native resolution to a high one, has been maturing since its introduction in early 2019 and currently offers a solid solution to running demanding graphics options, namely real-time ray tracing, at high resolutions like 4K without the native resolution's performance penalty. With the introduction of Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, we finally have a game where the ray tracing implementation offers a dramatic improvement in visuals. And the key to running it at a decent frame rate at high resolutions is NVIDIA's DLSS. If most games start supporting NVIDIA's proprietary upscaler and this level of ray traced graphics, how can AMD possibly compete without its own version of DLSS? If an RTX 3060 offers better visuals and frame rates than a Radeon 6800 XT in such cases, how can anyone justify buying an AMD GPU anymore? Well, it turns out that not only does AMD have a genuine answer to NVIDIA's DLSS, it's already being tested at developers and it's coming very soon. Today's sponsor, UCD Keys, has great offers on Windows Keys and now also on Office 19 Pro Plus. I've bought keys through this service myself and have recommended it to friends and patrons who have saved a small fortune compared to their local retail stores. The keys work globally and are activated very quickly. UCD Keys is now also offering a pack which includes Windows 10 Pro and Office 19 Pro Plus. Use the code C20 at checkout to get an additional 20% off at ucdkeys.com. Link in the description. Earlier this week, I published a video discussing a couple of several possible implementations of chiplets GPUs from AMD. There are enough indicators out there that AMD's next generation GPUs will be chiplets based, but the exact way these will be implemented is still up in the air. Check out my recent videos for the various implementations possible. But moving to chiplets won't matter much if AMD's software features continue to lag NVIDIA's, especially when it comes to resolution upscaling to reduce the impact of things like real-time ray tracing. I finished that last video with a small teaser of what I would be covering next regarding AMD's GPU performance going forward. On the 17th of March, AMD's Scott Herkelman went on PC World's podcast Full Nerd and was asked about AMD's competitor DLSS and had the following to say, We want to launch it this year. You don't need machine learning to do it. We're evaluating the many different ways. We are at a deficit, but when we come out with FSR, that point will be moved. So the impression that everyone got from Scott Herkelman's comments was that AMD still didn't have a specific implementation set in stone and that the release date was a very vague this year. He did seem confident that FSR would let AMD reach parity with NVIDIA in ray tracing games. Seeing how good Metro Enhanced Edition looks and runs, this PC World interview left me a bit worried about the future of AMD graphics. If NVIDIA GPUs from a lower tier can match high-end AMD GPUs when ray tracing is enabled, then AMD would be in serious trouble as more games come out with ray tracing support. After asking around at a few game studios, I got some good news to share. Firstly, AMD's DLSS competitor, FSR, is already at a significant number of developers. In fact, one of the devs I spoke with is at a fairly small studio, so it's not just the big studios that have this already running. Secondly, as per Herkelman's comments, FSR does not require training from a GAN to work, like DLSS does, or at least like how NVIDIA claims DLSS works. It's a black box, so it's not clear if it really uses machine learning or not. Without going into specifics, what I was told is that AMD's FSR uses algorithmic supersampling to upscale the image with minimal performance overhead. So basically it uses an algorithm that does not require proprietary hardware to run. It's a software solution that can take advantage of the massive parallelism that compute units afford. It's also going to be implemented early in the pipeline instead of the LSS, which is a bolt-on feature at the end of the pipeline, at least according to one of the devs I spoke with. It also requires minimal developer intervention, and this is very important. In the podcast with PC World, Scott Herkelman mentioned that AMD's solution would be more focused on what's easier for developers to implement, and that seems to be the case. 
As far as a release window, what I've been told is that it will be coming out in June, possibly along other AMD announcements which I might cover in another video. So that's great news for gamers and it's coming out much earlier than what most people assumed. Judging from the conversations I had with developers, it seems AMD is keen to launch this feature as polished as possible and with as many developers on board as possible. One interesting tidbit is that AMD's implementation might actually be compatible with NVIDIA GPUs. So you NVIDIA GTX owners will be happy to hear that you will be able to use a DLSS-like upscaler without having to upgrade to an RTX GPU whenever those become available. AMD has been pushing for open source solutions and FSI is in line with that strategy, which I applaud as proprietary solutions are never going to be beneficial to all gamers. And finally, regarding performance, all the devs I spoke with gave me the same answer. It's looking good in terms of speed and image quality, but they couldn't commit to specifics on speed versus DLSS as AMD sent out versions of FSR with different performance to different developers in an effort to catch leakers. So even if I did have a number to give you, it would likely be off of the final production version of FSR. So I know this is not much to go by, but the most important thing here for me is that AMD's DLSS, FSR, is coming next month and not like at the end of the year. It's AMD's biggest software push right now, and the fact that it's easy for developers to implement it could be truly transformative for the industry. We've seen how DLSS has evolved to the point where one wishes it was implemented in every game and available to everyone. And it's possible that with AMD making a push for FSR to be open source to the point of it working with NVIDIA's GPUs, NVIDIA themselves might feel pressure to make DLSS more open, which would be a win for gamers. I've long suspected that DLSS could work perfectly fine on all the GTX GPUs use like a 1080 Ti and that the only reason Nvidia has gone with the whole machine learning angle is to force gamers to upgrade. I have no proof of that and I could be wrong. Maybe it's just years of Nvidia pulling shenanigans on us that has turned me into a cynic but most people don't upgrade GPUs every year and being locked out of a feature just for the sake of profit margins does no good for the PC gaming community. I had a close look at a bunch of papers that have come out in recent months offering upscaling solutions and there are there are many ways to skin this cat with or without resorting to machine learning. I'll put links in the description to the ones that seem most promising candidates for how FSR works. I suspect there will be leaks over the coming weeks on this and with more detailed information, so you won't have too long to wait to see what awaits us. I don't know about you, but I'm super excited with this news and what it could mean for PC gaming, especially at 4K. Knowing AMD, I know I should temper my expectations. That track record on the software front has been pretty poor, but I can't help but to get excited at the prospect of an open standards DLSS alternative that we might see become the norm in most major game engines. And even if a small developer like one I spoke with is using it already, it seems it's a lot easier to implement than DLSS. Now as far as consoles are concerned, I received no specific info, but judging by AMD's comments, it seems FSR would come at a later date for consoles, and the June launch of this feature is PC only. So the last thing I'm left wondering is if artificial intelligence will really have the impact on gaming as previously thought, and I've done videos hyping AI-generated content in games myself. If DLSS gives way to an alternative that doesn't require machine learning simply because it's easier for developers to implement, then will that be true of future artificial intelligence implementations of other things, like GAN-based character creators or even asset creation from image reconstruction? Does it all come down to whatever is easier for developers to implement? Perhaps that's a question worth asking the AI developers out there working in this field. If FSR turns out to give worse image quality than DLSS, but become widely adopted because it's easier to implement, I'm not so sure if that's a good thing for the industry. And if that is the case, then Nvidia should really open up DLSS as not to harm the potential for other machine learning based solutions in the future. If Nvidia really cares about AI solutions in games developing and flourishing, perhaps it's time they stop creating black box solutions that only benefit their profit margins and leave a good portion of gamers without access to them, at least until their competitors come up with alternatives. 
This video is made possible by my fantastic patrons whose support is absolutely crucial to keeping this channel alive. Join my Patreon today and you'll get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server where our community posts daily technology related news and discusses technology in a healthy and welcoming environment. If you can't contribute financially then please give this video a like and share it on social media as that really helps. Thanks for watching and until the next one.